another day and another day of the slate of the playing games to go through. Today we had the nine ten games for both the East and the West. And let me tell you, I said yesterday's games was tough, but today's games back to back bangers. I'm gonna be honest. If yesterday was a was a product of how the playing can be trash, and I think people even enjoyed the ending of that Lakers game. I think after uh, sleeping on it a little bit, I think I think I actually did end up enjoying that Lakers game. But that Heat game, that was very tough. Even if, if even if I have a bias of a Heat fan, that was a pretty much a wire to wire victory for the Hawks. But today's game, wire to wire, amazing games. Now, I will say the first game, I think it was probably a better game for me because I just knew the Raptors was going to choke that game. I just I just felt it. Um, it really felt like the refs was really heavily on the Raptors' side for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. It's some teams like the refs just let the players play. No matter how physical they play, and they somehow still get calls. I don't know what it was. I don't know what was going on with some of those calls, but it was very questionable. But... 10 out of 10 games. I think the Raptors Bulls game could have been a little bit uh better. It could have been a little bit more close, like more consistent. We had all type of stuff going on in that game. Even when the Raptors were up, it was very entertaining. I'm talking about we getting buzzer beater half course over three people from Van Vliet. We getting dominating quarters. Even in some quarters, we getting Levine getting 17 points in the third quarter. Bulls storming back. Fourth quarter was amazing down the stretch. I was losing my mind watching this game, man. It was a crazy game. Um, shout out to the Raptors, to be honest, because I honestly kind of wanted them to play the Heat so that the Heat would lose. And I just wanted to see the Raptors really just blow a lot of Bucks fans with how hard they finna really guard Giannis. That would have really blew a lot of Bucks fans. Um, but I do think the Bucks would have easily beat them. But... Yeah, shout out to the Raptors. They did go down. Um, I really kind of felt bad because I didn't. I only really was trying to pick the Raptors and some of my stuff because I know Raptors fans really do go crazy, and that was really the only reason. I really felt like the Bulls was gonna get that win. I just believed more down the stretch in players on the Bulls than the Raptors. It just is what it is. And a lot of stuff has just not really been going right for the Raptors this year. I heard a lot of discontent about their locker room. All different types of stuff. Now, I did a podcast with my podcast mate going over the first round, and we went over pretty much all the games that were supposed to happen today, and we did it the day before, so that will be coming out, and I'll have all that in it, but it's going to be some stuff that already has happened in the past, and y'all going to be able to see how we, what we thought about that, but we also went over the other game, which, in my opinion, was the better game. Now, if you've seen any of my videos on the channel, you know how big of a Thunder fan I am. Well, not Thunder fan, but Shea fan. But I'm not going to lie, Shea making it really, really tough. And I'm a real loyal fan when it comes to the teams, but I might got to have a team out west because, man, the Thunder, they, I don't know what it is. from Jalen Williams didn't even play that crazy, but, like, he is, it's just some things that he does. He doesn't just keep settling and settling. He just eventually, like, it just, it, he just plays like he's so much older and he's been in the league so much longer. It doesn't really seem like he's a rookie. And he didn't even have that crazy of a game. But for some of those plays where he's wide open for three and he's taking it to the rim, where he really blew through, like, two people and put it, he's a much better dribbler than people think that he would be. Like, it's a lot of stuff with the Thunder that you could really give credit to. Um, but I'm going to be honest. For majority of the game, the best player on the court was Giddy. Josh Giddy was controlling the game. In a lot of different ways. Now, I'm going to be real. The Thunder, they was really holding the game close for a large part in the first half with Shea really struggling with the double teams. And I'm going to be honest, they really never really stopped doubling him. But the way they were really playing, the Thunder was really smart. I really like the Thunder coach, man. What they were doing with those double teams, they would put Giddy right there at that free throw line. As soon as Shea would get double teamed, he would th dump the ball down to Giddy. Giddy would drive, and somebody would cut off the corner, and they would get like layups off that every single time. It really reminds me of something that the Warriors used to do all the time with Iguodala and Draymond with Curry, when Curry would get doubled at a high double. So, nah, the way the Thunder played, really good. Now, you kind of got to think of this like this as a Pelicans fan. I've seen a couple things about, uh, not Lonzo, but Zion being healthy and his body not feeling well. Now, if he has something mental going on, then that's kind of different. But I don't know, man. I just don't understand how players now can be fully healthy and still set out elimination games. That's kind of crazy. I'm a big... I'm a big, I'm a big Zion guy. I've always liked Zion since he was even in high school. But that just, I don't know, man. There's something about players nowadays where it just seems like 
they get so many excuses, and I'm not going to be here and make excuses for Zion. That's kind of wild. They needed him to play. Um, apparently, apparently, Alvarado didn't play or Nance, but, yeah, they really did need uh, Zion to play in that game. It was a very, very close game, and they could have won it without all three of those players. B.I. was really playing really well. I think on that three, B.I. ended up hitting. Um, he actually got fouled, but B.I. did get, miss that free throw. If he doesn't miss that free throw, it doesn't matter if he got fouled on that three that he hit. If he makes that free throw, that's a game-tying shot. But, yeah, um, I think Shea had – it's a lot of questionable things that happened in his game from the Thunder. I'm going to be honest. Like, Giddy only had, like, two turnovers in the entire game, but he kind of had, like – he had, like, one bad turnover where CJ McCollum kind of presses him as soon as he tries to drive, and he tries to spin off of it, and he just loses the ball. And that was when the Pelicans was kind of making a run to take the lead, and they ended up actually taking the lead that next possession, I think. But that's when Val Valentunas actually does hit the three to take the lead. And it was really tough to – um. It was really tough timing for the um, Thunder. And then he does have another turnover where he gets to travel. But that's really questionable. The, the, the travels is really just depending on if the refs want to call that or not. That's really just random. But one thing I will say about Giddy, like I said, for a majority of the game, he was the best player on the court. Now, for the Thunder to win, they do need Shea to have the ball in their hands a little bit more. But the way they were playing, I, the, it's like the announcers was begging for Shea to get the ball. But they, it's like they wasn't really noticing how the Pelicans was playing them. Now, I do think Shea should start out with the ball on all those possessions because once you take two people, once you got two people, you got to literally use that to your advantage as a Thunder. Even if he's getting doubled, if you can get that play to happen, like if you can get the ball to Shea so he can still get it to Giddy in a better position than what they were doing, I think they should do that nine every single time. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, it was working at a really, really high rate. Like, I think Giddy ended up with, like, 30 points and 10 assists. Only two turnovers with, like, 42 minutes of play. That's amazing. And for that to be, like, their first game of, like, playoff type of atmosphere, that's huge. I'm going to be honest. That's really, really huge for the Thunder. Um, man, it's kind of crazy. I've seen the Thunder have all these picks. They got, like, 15 First round picks in the next five drafts. It's gonna get real interesting. I'm, I'm trying to get y'all to understand, man. The OKC Thunder, they really got a lot going on right now. I'm gonna be honest. This was this has to be an L season for the um, Pelicans, man. For this season to start out the way it did, that hot start, then having that terrible midway, then they tried to t make up for it at the end. It's just it was just an all over the place season, and to go out like this and not even be able to play in the playoffs after y'all played in the playoffs last year, man, this has to be a tough way to end the season. Um, their whole their whole future, I'm gonna be honest, their entire future is banking on Zion's health, and I'm gonna be honest, I said this about Joel Embiid, and I was wrong at the time. I said if I'm the 76ers, I trade Joel Embiid because he just can't stay healthy. If I'm the Pelicans, I, now looking back in hindsight, the Philadelphia 76ers 100% made the right decision. Even though he does somehow get hurt in the playoffs, but he has been turned into an MVP caliber player. He's been gotten hurt less and less. So that ended up being a very, very good decision by the 76ers. But it's going to be interesting for the Pelicans to figure out how to keep Zion healthy. Um, even when he's healthy, he's not trying to play. That's going to be interesting. But B.I. had a great game. Um, McCollum was having some very interesting possessions. I feel like as the veteran presence, he got to do better than that. I think Valentinus played pretty well, um, especially man in the boards, but they kind of needed a little bit more. They should have gave him a little bit more touches in the paint because they really, uh, the Thunder really couldn't do anything to stop those. I'm going to be honest. Um, I think Herb, Herb and Trey Murphy played pretty well, but all in all, um, the Pelicans are in a really interesting spot because they're not like a, they're not like a win-now team, but they kind of getting to that point where they're a win-now team. But the only reason they're really not a win-now team is really Zion. Like the, That's like the huge thing that's holding them back. Like Without Zion, they're really uh, on the brink of the playoffs team. Like they, good, they could make the playoffs, but they could very much be a lottery team. With Zion, they're one of the best teams in the league. So... And that was shown throughout the beginning of the season. He just got to stay healthy. So it's going to be really tough for the Pelicans. Um, for all the people that think that B.I. is the best player on the team, B.I. is amazing. But that just shows you how good of a player Zion really is. I'm going to be honest. Even when B.I. wasn't playing, they was at a whole different level team-wise. They wasn't even in this range. But it's interesting to see how this season is wor working out. Um... If you guys want more of these daily recaps for the games, there's not going to be no games tonight. 
Um, tomorrow there will be games though, and then pretty much every other day after that it will be games. If you guys do want these to continue, just make sure to drop the like, make sure to subscribe if you're new. Turn on post case be the first of all the videos, all that good stuff out the way. I appreciate anybody that did drop a like and subscribe. Um, but without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz, and I did, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!